Throughout my career, I've met hundreds of software developers and CS students. I know many of them very well. And to be frank, one thing seems to be consistent. Most of us have no idea what level are we really on. So answer me this. Are you in denial about your programming skills? Welcome to Having Coffee with Smog, where we drink the thing and discuss the tech. Grab a cup and join me. All right, let's recap. I've been working with the teams at Amazon, Cisco and Ericsson, met multiple leaders and software developers that have years and years of successful careers. I also interviewed people applying for software positions. Their confidence level were skewed more often than not. I found there are some commonalities and most people fall onto the same traps and schemes. I hope this will help you realize where you're at and rethink uh, your approach to things. Let's start with a story about a developer who I was interviewing for position in neighboring theme. I was to give an impartial opinion as the person was previously working in this company. It was under the question if their contract should be renewed or not. Pretty tough role to be in, believe me. No matter what you say, some people will hold it against you. I chose a fairly simple problem. For a long list of characters, find a shortest sublist that contains all the words of second list. This is a task that can be accomplished in less than an hour, including the code, test and some follow-up discussions if you're at medium to senior level. So the fellow is brought in to the interview. I explain the problem and wait for their questions and ideas on the solution. Instantly, I could hear some tension in their voice. Seems like they are almost offended with the question and clearly there is some arrogance and unbelievable level of confidence. They didn't care to ask for any clarification or anything at all. They went on straight to solve the problem, or so it seemed. I have to say one thing about my interviewing. I'm always more interested in the thought process rather than the solution itself. I want to know exactly how you arrived at this idea and what choices you made on your way here. Otherwise, I might think you just, you're lucky and you heard the question before. So this candidate is clearly not going to be bothered to explain himself. He starts to produce code in shared code pad. When I prompt for some insight, I get shushed and told to wait until it's done. It seems like I'm disturbing the great maestro and godly act of creation. Well, I have time. Let's see how this pans out. Finally, it's finished. I try to follow the code, but not much makes sense. All variable names are just letters. Some of them are uninitialized, others aren't used at all, and there is a lot of unnecessary pointer arithmetics. I don't get it. I ask to run the program with some examples and try to get to the bottom of the idea, but the code fails and the explanations are vague and dismissive. I have enough, and I clearly express that I won't be able to give him a good feedback unless I understand what the code aims to do. Guess what? I was accused of attacking him personally and being a bad colleague. Then the candidate started to explain the overly complex solution they came up with, with graphs, nodes and search trees. What? Long story short, I had to fail them and they didn't get to stay in the company. Clearly, they overestimated how good they are and somehow they managed to mislead other people into supporting them. Later, it was revealed that their share of work in theme was actually accomplished by, well, other team members who were constantly picking up slack. I had few other similar encounters. In one interview, a candidate who was interested in a senior position was great in answering theory questions, but couldn't create a few files with simplest class hierarchy describing Animal Kingdom. He really took fake it till you make it to heart. Sadly, this is very often the case with people very early in their career. We often underestimate how good we really are and that leads us to misinterpreting the signs when things go wrong. 
This is a well-known thing. Such bias was discovered and studied by Cornell psychologists, Mr. Dunning and Mr. Kruger. And as you may guess, it is called Dunning-Kruger effect. It describes the relation between how we feel about skill or area of knowledge and more objective measurement of how we actually perform. I recommend you have a read on the details if you're interested. But for now, we'll settle for a short explanation and a graph. Take a look at this curve. First, you know nothing. And as soon as you learn the bare minimum to accomplish anything, you feel like a master. This stage is called I know everything. Here are all wannabes that aren't really ready to become a proper devs just yet. Other name I've seen is Mount Stupid. So make no mistake, being humble is a huge part of the job. As you see, there are other major points on the graph, but we'll get there in a bit. Next story. Once I have a person in my team who was constantly questioning their abilities. They were quite fresh in the company, but still very well equipped for the job. I had to assure them that there is nothing wrong with their work or thinking. This went on for months and was weighing heavily on the team. Surely you may feel uncertain about things and second guess yourself. But if you do it all the time, it stops you from advancing. So listen to this. There was one significant change we could make to largely improve the system for us and other teams as well. And it was suggested by that person. I couldn't get them to propose in front of larger audience and because they were afraid how it will be received when coming from a junior level engineer. I wasn't comfortable presenting idea that wasn't mine and we were having this back and forth for a little while. They ended up not submitting the idea to bigger forum and thing never happened. Sad, this could be a great opportunity to jumpstart their career and get a quick promotion. I was certain they had enough in them to be on next level already. That meant better pay, more influence and more interesting challenges, but they felt to, that they aren't competent enough. Dunning-Kruger chart has also a name for that stage. It is called I'm never going to get this or Valley of Despair. People who are there suffer from imposter syndrome. Funny enough, if you feel like that, most likely you already know more than you think. In my opinion, industry has this disease. We tend to focus on years of experience rather than the raw skill and knowledge people have. I know people that work years under junior or regular label while they should ask for promotion long time ago. You see, I was talking about this in other video. Why aren't you getting promoted? You need to express your will to get promoted. So people know. Okay, what about my personal experience and how I feel about myself? Well, I hope that I went through both of previous stages. You can bet that at some point I was so certain of my skills that I could dismiss any and every feedback I received. After shaking that off and realize how wrong I was and how much I still need to learn, I felt like I'm never going to get the basics and how much is there to master. Oh, it was overwhelming. I should given myself a break long time ago. Now. I'm more humble than ever and aware of many, many gaps in my knowledge, but I feel like I'm able to identify what I don't know. This is last part and it's very important. If you understand your shortcomings, you're able to work on them. So if you allow, I'll indulge myself and say that I left Valley of Despair and I'm slowly climbing on the justified self-assessment slope, which is called plateau of sustainability or slope of enlightenment or simply I know enough to say it's complicated. I believe that my tech workshop is good enough to suffice for some time with learning set on slow gear. Right now I'm focusing on my communication and people skills. These I think are something I need the most right now. Funny enough, 
you hardly ever think about these when you decide on this career path and prepare for it. There is more than meets the eye when it comes to dealing with human part of the job. And this isn't discussed enough. Nevertheless, I still have days when I get hit by small imposter syndrome and I'm back at the valley of despair. Am I good enough for this? Should I even be here? When will people realize I am a fraud? Luckily that passes every time I achieve something small. Deliver a piece of code, give an insightful review or voice an idea of or opinion on things that happen in the project. Have a think and let me know if you're haunted by those thoughts as well. Subscribe. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers.